Our Rays Midbell Music Band of the Week coming from the Cedar Catholic Trojans Band. Great music and check it out. A fantastic assortment of instruments on Friday night. I am for one a good fan of the high school band. But anyway, let's keep it going. Welcome back to the zone. A great first half of action so far in Iowa to kick off week three. Yep, but now it's time to move to South Dakota with a big time battle between Elk Point Jefferson and Winter. Potential Class 11B State Playoff Preview. That's where these teams have met the last three times. Opening minute of the second quarter, Warriors driving. Eli Bober takes it on the quarterback keeper. He goes 20 yards, getting it down to the one. So that sets up Zach Olson, who's going to take the handoff, and that's the he takes him for the first score of the game. Winners up six to nothing. Then later in the quarter, Bober looks to pass, finds a wide open Carson Kaiser. Down the seam for the touchdown. That's a play for Lore. Warriors lead 12 0 at the half. Then it ends into the third. Bober keeps it, gets to the edge, reaching to the pylon, and in. Top ranked team has opened up an 18 point lead, but in the fourth, e -page, EPJ gets on the board. Keaton Gale, it seems like he's in our highlights every week, slings it to Ashton Fairbanks, who reels it in. That closes the gap to 10, but winner claims the victory over the Huskies 18 to 8. More South Dakota action this time in the Dakota Dome. Vermillion coming off a 55-0 win over Lakota Tech. Looking to upset unbeaten Canton. Canton drive here late in the first quarter. Alex Reed reading this play to perfection. Breaking out the arm. Aerial attack. Tegan Granham who trucks in right at the end zone for the TD. He added up there 9-0 Seahawks. Vern possession now. It'll be a pass intended for Ryan Chapman behind the 10-yard line. But it's picked off by Jace Charlin. For the turnover, a great play there by the Seahawks. Halfway in the second, it's Granham on the carry. He'll break out of the line before anyone even touches him. Nothing but greener pastures for him. See you later. Plenty of offense, but Canton comes away late with a 45-31 win. Moving over to Nebraska, started off action with game one of a Hardington doubleheader as Cedar Catholic coats Archbishop Bergen. Very first play of the game, Brighton Whitmore takes it to the outside, and it's a race to the end zone. The junior goes untouched to the end zone. That puts up Cedar Catholic up seven to nothing. He's very fast. Jump to the second, and it's Whitmire again. This time laying the boom on the defender and diving in for the five-yard touchdown. Trojans up 14 to nothing. Then, with just under a minute and a half, Braden Riefenrath calls his own number for the one-yard TD sneak. Cedar Catholic goes up in the half up by three touchdowns, and they go on to win this one 34 to six. And when there's a day cap, there's a night cap. Hardington Newcastle facing Lutheran High Northeast. Wildcats averaging 64 points per game. Eagles averaging 39 points a contest. First quarter, Wildcats knocking the door. Cole Hines keeps it. He's able to stretch over the goal line for the seven yard score. Hardington Newcastle goes up six zip. Moving ahead now in the quarter. Hines rolling away from the pressure. He's going to escape the somehow, some way like a magician finds Mason Krause. And he has a convoy of blockers move out of the way, almost reaches the goal line. He's going to step right out of bounds just before Wildcats again sniffing the end zone. They found their way tonight. It's Hines again from one yard out to make it a 14 0 lead. They'd have 22 points a lead there before we left. They go on to win this big 82 0. Just squeak that one out. A pair of Siouxland squads dueling for its first one of the season in Laurel Concord, Coleridge, and Tri County. Wolfpack beat the Bears 50-14 in 2023. Third quarter, Bears down by eight. They opt for the fake and it turns into a touchdown. What a play. Just like that, it's tied. Tri-County looking to answer back. Wolfpack chugging legs, refusing to go down, but in the process gets stripped. Bears pounce on the loose ball. This game's still tied in the fourth. Wolfpack with a big strike for 71 yards. And Tri-County pulls away to win this one 36-16. And finally, it's Walt Hill and Niobrara Verdigree. Blue Jays have dropped the last three matchup. Visitors strike first. Connor Thompson making a play here for NV, pushing down the far sideline. He's going to waltz his way in for the touchdown here at Walt Hill. Cougars continuing to cook. This time, Isaac Hofer pulling away for the score. Walt Hill is going to respond a bit later here. Caton Robinson delivers a stiff arm, a mean one at that for the touchdown. But it's Walt Hill coming up short, 80-20. And now for a look at our Siouxland scoreboard, starting off with a pair of Iowa games. MMCRU, the Royals, big win over Hartley Melvin Sanborn, 44 to nothing, while Lamars takes down Boyden Hall Rock Valley at home, 35 to two. And elsewhere around Siouxland and Nebraska, Guardian Angel Central Catholic defeats Meade, 48 to 14, while a shutout for Dakota Valley, 63 to nothing over Lakota Tech on the road. Now for a look at all of our scores throughout the region, check our website. Where is it? Siouxlandproud.com. We've got to take another quick break, but don't go anywhere. 
We'll announce our nightly awards, including Player of the Week honors. So stay in the zone. Hi, this is Tony Palmer, Sports Zone's Player of the Week. This week's winner is coming up next.